Hello everyone. Here I am in my basement shop. It's been a long cold winter and uh, been noticing on YouTube how people were making air and steam engines out of these little weed whacker motors and I turns out I had a couple of them that uh, I wasn't using anymore. One didn't run, one didn't run very well. Nothing wrong with the motors, they were just carburation issues I think. Uh, so I decided I would try something different and I figured out a way to put these two engines together by joining their crankshafts. We're actually producing a crankshaft to go between them and uh, run a two-cylinder air engine. So this is what we've got here. As you can see I've got it hooked up to uh, a couple of uh, check ball valves with a rod inside that runs off the top of the piston and opens and closes the uh, uh, the intake and it runs that way and I've got a my air hose temporarily hooked up uh, to these uh, running about 80 pounds of air pressure the engine seems to run pretty well and I've married the two motors together and mounted it on a board to give it some stability and I found that leaving the mufflers on actually made it run a little quieter <coughs> well, because my machinery is not perfect it does have somewhat of a clatter to it I really don't see that this will have any practical use I've seen a lot of these air motors and steam motors but um, uh, they my my uh, thought is is that they tend to not really be practical at least with steam given the amount of pressure that you need to produce uh, would require probably a lot more energy than just fixing a gas motor and running that but uh, at any rate I thought it would be an interesting thing to do so in a moment I'll start it up for you so you can see it run and then uh, and I'll then I'll take it apart and show you how I actually built it if anybody's willing to try or wanting to try Okay, so we'll, let's get this thing started. Okay, I got the uh, air pressure on, and I'm just going to give this uh, kind of weighted flywheel of mine a little spin, and we'll go. Interestingly enough, I uh, found out that this motor can run in either direction. The pistons are horizontally opposed so that when one is down, the other one is the top dead center. So it runs like kind of like a little V-twin. Here it goes the other way. Okay, here is the uh, the two check valves removed, and these two rods I uh, just cut from regular rod stock. They fit pretty snugly into the um, uh, connection there that goes to the um, ball valve there. Um, as you can see, the uh, extension fall go pretty close to the top of the piston so there's not much rod actually sticking through but that's all it really needs is just a, a short throw because uh, there's a lot of pressure on the other side of that and uh, all it needs is one quick burst to really make the engine run pretty well uh, I, I suspect that I could probably get a little more power if I had a smaller diameter rod so that uh, there wouldn't there could be a little more blow by so the air could pass by easier um, I'm going to try that or actually what I thought I might do is to 
uh, take my grinder and cut uh, like four slots into the sides uh, symmetrically around the sides of this rod and allow more air to pass by that way uh, still there by maintaining the strength of the rod itself which is probably not an issue I've seen some people make these things with nothing but a the barrel of a plastic uh, pen and they seem to work okay uh, but this is what I had to work with so so that's basically uh, what everybody else is doing um, using the rod to actuate the um, check valve to allow the air to enter into the cylinder and push the piston down okay I've done nothing more than just remove the flywheel just wanted to talk a little bit about that this flywheel is probably about five pounds it's made of cast iron uh, I don't really know the exact diameter it looks like it's about seven to eight inches and I basically just put this together with a couple of um, uh, what what are what these uh, uh, chrome colored center things are like uh, washers that I had kicking around I'm not nearly sure what they go to I think they actually go to um, a shock absorber assembly on a car I've got a lot of car parts around so I think those are the top washers that go on top of the rubber bushing on a uh, shock absorber but they happen to fit in the center of that hole just right and the shaft that goes through is actually the shaft that was on the motor that the original flywheel was attached to uh, so I took that off and uh, utilized that so basically a flywheel is, is nothing more than a, a heavy wheel that can carry a little momentum through the next cycle so the engine can keep on running and this is what I had kicking around so this is what I used Okay, here's the bottom of the motor, and um, I had to figure out a way to uh, put these two motors together in a, in a stable fashion. So what I did was um, I actually tapped uh, some threads into this part of the molding here. This was just where a connector uh, bolt was for the other plastic housing on the weed whacker. And then I created a, a spacer using uh, steel gas line as a matter of fact uh, as long as it's straight it's very stable and uh, interestingly enough I didn't have a long uh, bolt so I made one out of a uh, what is it a ten penny nail I think I actually put some threads on the end of the nail and cut a slot into it so I could use it uh, use a screwdriver on it and it threads into the uh, housing on the other end and holds everything together so basically I have to take these out and uh, I don't know if you can see it there but there's my bolt all it is is just the nail with a, with a slot in it I suppose I could have gone to the hardware store and bought one, but I kind of like making things on my own and I had the tools to do it with, so there you go. Alrighty, here's the engine upside down now, and what you can see is uh, there's uh, some flat bar here that I made that uh, I tapped out so that uh, we could get a real stable uh, marrying of these two housings together and I utilized the screws that actually hold the head of the motor on and when they were in the weed whacker they also uh, served as a uh, uh, mounting for the uh, plastic housing of the uh, weed whacker uh, so all I need to do is just back out these four screws and I can take this bar off and I actually did the same thing on the other side I had to kind of reconfigure it a little differently because there's only two uh, bolts on this side that hold the head on and I uh, needed to uh, shape it a little differently to uh, uh, you know allow it to fit into place right so I'll go ahead and take those off and we'll look inside okay so there's the two flat bar connectors that I made you can see they're just um, you know just uh, probably 8 gauge steel I believe I'm not exactly sure of the gauge but pretty rugged stuff and 
just some flat stock and I just kind of worked it and shaped it. Once these are removed, the engine can, can come apart. I'll try to do this and hold the camera at the same time. With the uh, rear motor and uh, this was a plastic end piece that was on the uh, motor here and I just kind of reshaped that so that I could sort of uh, close that gap up in between the motors because there is a little gap there and the front motor here is basically unchanged except for um, the crank inside um, on most of these motors the connecting rod fits onto a little stub and that stub is just long enough to hold the connecting rod it passes a little ways past it in this particular case I needed to have some way of connecting onto that stub <clears throat> so I basically took the engine apart and blob welded some steel on the end of that stud and then spent a lot of time reshaping it and honing it down to the exact diameter of the stud basically making the stud about twice as long as it was originally and that gave me a little something to uh, get onto so I could connect the other motor to it and on the other motor <clears throat> I had a piece of flat steel pretty heavy gauge steel probably much more heavier than it needs to be and um, I had to shorten the shaft on this motor uh, quite a bit uh, but uh, on this flat piece of steel I drilled a hole just the correct diameter to fit on the shaft there exactly in the center <clears throat> and then I drilled a hole in the end uh, that would correspond with that stud on the other motor and then I had to be very careful about how I welded this on because I needed to make sure that the pistons were in the right orientation and that would all go together uh, and it was a bit of a fight actually but uh, I actually uh, got it right the first time or close enough anyway so the motor can actually run but what this actually does is it um, <coughs> acts as a connector and a counterweight so that <coughs> excuse me if um, I had no idea what kind of RPM I was going to get out of this motor but I figured if it was a high enough RPM then the balance would be an issue so um, I wanted to make sure that this was balanced as well as possible uh, I didn't use a uh, drill press or any kind of precision machinery work I kind of did this by hand so pretty pretty fortunate I think that uh, it worked out but if you've got uh, that kind of machinery you can always do a better job perhaps than I did and when the engine runs and you hear that clatter I think it's this hole it's just a little larger diameter than that stud so it rattles a little bit as it runs but um, what the heck it's only a hobby anyways so that's how you do it. That's how you make a twin cylinder weed whacker motor and uh, it's a fun thing to do. I don't know, uh, like I said, how practical it is, but uh, it can be done. Um, I may be having another video out uh, a little later on. My brother, who is a Harley guy, says that um, Harley Motors the pistons run in uh, unison. In other words, they don't they aren't horizontally opposed. They run one actually runs just a little bit behind the other and that's what gives those V-twin motors uh, in a Harley motorcycle their power. Uh, because they do that they need to be counterweighted so I was thinking I might try that. I might try reconfiguring this, take this off and make me another one and have one piston follow just behind the other and get a, like a double compression stroke and that might actually make this motor more powerful right now it doesn't really produce a lot of power you didn't see it but I could actually stop it with my hand if uh, I had a glove on <laughs> um, so uh, if, it, if you could get more power out of it uh, that might make it kind of a, maybe a practical application one of the issues with steam is that these motors are not designed to run on steam so 
moisture is the enemy inside a motor and these these motors are no different they have bearings in them that need to be lubricated and uh, without a good lubrication system uh, steam really isn't practical so uh, but like I said it was a long winter and I had to do something so I figured I'd try this and uh, uh, maybe inspire somebody to do something different okay thank you